So in this video I want to uh, share with you a uh, quick idea of making a uh, very effective uh, bi-quad antenna for 2.4 gigahertz. Now what I've been doing for the past uh, year, probably just over a year, is uh, whenever I get some spare time I'm actually uh, putting a uh, book together. Now I don't know if it's going to be a book or I'm going to upload it all as a uh, type of blog. But uh, I do it in my spare time so I can't actually uh, tell you uh, at this moment in time when it's going to be finished. But uh, this idea came to me uh, a few months ago. Uh, to actually make the reflector for a uh, single biquad element using one of these uh, pie dishes. So it's been some time since I actually uh, made a uh, biquad and I've got quite a few new subscribers since the uh, last time I made one of these antennas. So I'm going to go over the methods how to actually uh, make one of these very effective uh, antennas for 2.4 gigahertz and um, some of the reasons why uh, this is my favourite antenna to actually make out of all the uh, different antennas that you can produce over the uh, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz and 5.8 gigahertz because uh, this antenna is so simple and uh, even if you get it a little bit wrong even if your measurements are a little bit off it still outperforms most things that you can actually buy these days it really is an effective antenna and uh, if you've never actually built a an antenna before for uh, say 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi or uh, you know for FPV this is uh, a brilliant antenna to start with because like I say even if you get the measurements a little bit wrong and uh, you know your elements are not quite straight it's still an extremely powerful antenna so as I said, I'm going to be using one of these pie dishes as a uh, reflector. Now, a uh, single element biquad just fits nicely inside here. And uh, the tapered sides as well really uh, add to the uh, effect of capturing as much of uh, that signal as possible to feed the uh, elements on the biquad. And uh, if you actually do uh, quite a bit of searching on uh, the internet, you'll see where people have actually uh, tried to do this by bending the sides on a uh, you know a reflector or actually soldering sides onto a PCB as the uh, reflector to taper the sides in slightly but this is as if it's uh, just made perfectly for the job for a single bike one anyway now I'm not quite sure if these particular pies are sold all over the world but if you actually have a look around and see if you can get something that is a uh, similar shape as this and uh, they're not expensive but uh, I don't particularly like them but my dog she actually loves them so I have actually got a few of these because I tend to give them to her as a uh, bit of a treat once a week and she does like the chicken and bacon flavour. So to connect to this uh, particular build, I'm going to be using one of these uh, little uh, SMA bulkhead connectors. Now I'm not going to mess around actually drilling the holes and uh, attaching this with some uh, small nuts and bolts. What I'm actually going to be doing is soldering the entire thing to the uh, back of the reflector. But uh, you could also use a small piece of tube and actually uh, attach some coax to the back of this to build your antenna onto. Um, I've made quite a few videos on building uh, bi-quads in the past. There's lots of different ways you can do this, but these you can get off eBay. Uh, you can get about uh, 10 for you know five pounds from China they're not very expensive at all and uh, this way as well because what I'm going to be doing is connecting the uh, alpha card directly into the uh, SMA connector here I'm not going to get any loss with uh, adding coax in the middle so we're going to get the best possible signal out of this to the uh, alpha card so next I'm going to make the bow tie element for the bi quad itself. Now the method that I use is quite unique and uh, it's probably different to uh, methods that you've seen before either on YouTube videos or uh, read about in blogs. Now you can actually use a ruler and measure off each quarter wavelength along the uh, wire itself and then put the bends at the correct uh, angles in the correct places. But uh, the way I actually do it is I use a piece of perspex here and uh, the measurement across here is uh, a quarter wavelength for the uh, biquad and uh, the long measurement along here is a double wavelength if you want to make a uh, double biquad for instance. 
so once you've actually made a measuring tool like this it becomes really easy to uh, produce quite a number of uh, biquad elements quite quickly and quite accurately now this measuring tool that I've uh, made for myself actually measures 30 millimeters along its width here now 30 millimeters is a little bit too short for a quarter wavelength for the uh, biquad I like to make my uh, quarter wavelengths on my biquads at uh, 30.25 millimeters so this is actually a little bit short and it's a little bit short for a reason so the reason that my uh, little measuring tool here is uh, a little bit shorter than the uh, correct wavelength at 30 millimeters is because if I butt it up against this uh, bend here that I've already put in this piece of wire I take my needle nose pliers put that up against the measuring tool like so then what I know is is the side wall of the needle nose pliers here all the way to the outer edge of the wire actually measures 31 0.25 millimeters because I'm taking into consideration the uh, diameter of the wire and I want all the measurements on the outside of my element to come in at exactly a quarter wavelength at 31.25 millimeters if I didn't do it that way and I actually measured this off at 31.25 I would have a slightly longer wavelength than I would actually need so the actual element wouldn't work properly at 2.4 gigahertz so actually using one of these and doing it this way you can get really accurate measurements along the complete uh, element itself without having to mess around with uh, marker pens and actually bending because uh, doing it that way you do start to get uh, you know your measurements a little bit shorter using a ruler but doing it this way it's all nice and uniform and the bow tie element comes together quite nicely so to start me off what I've done here is put a right angle bending at the beginning now I haven't actually measured this I just need to make sure that it's longer than 15 millimeters because 15 millimeters is the height that the uh, element needs to be from the back reflector so I've just guesstimated that first length there so take my measuring tool butt that up against that first bend come in with my needle nose pliers make sure it's nice and straight and then I put my first bend in like so and then again come in with the measuring tool needle nose pliers then I can put my second bend in so doing it this way it's really quick and each one of those quarter wavelengths are exactly the same size without having to stop using a ruler and a marker pen So we're nearing the end it starts to get a little bit fiddly near the end because you want this wire to loop underneath there so I'll just loop it around so just get my measuring tool in there what I actually want to do is give it a bit of a twist and then bend down so I still need to go in and straighten it out a little bit but each one of those quarter wavelengths are exactly the same so it's all nice and uniform so I've gone ahead and I've straightened it all out so I've cut away the waste from here and what I'm going to do now is solder this part to this part of the element 
Now when making a bi-quad like this, the major failure point is uh, these two ends here that I'm going to solder together. So uh, I've got a scrap piece of wood here, I've drilled a hole through it so I can fit that leg down into there. Now I'm going to actually fix it down with some masking tape and that will allow me to get in there with a the soldering iron, get plenty of heat in there and flow some solder in there so we've got a really good joint between those two. And while it's in the jig it's a good idea to tin up the uh, opposite side as well because these are going to be our two feed points. So I'm going to solder the bulkhead connector directly onto the pie dish so I've uh, cleaned up the uh, bulkhead connector around the sides here and I've pre-tinned with solder all the way around there. I've uh, cleaned some of the paint off here and I'm going to pre-tin on there as well and I've also cleaned a small space here that I'm going to uh, actually solder the ground plane for the bi-quad directly onto the tin here because the uh, signal wire is going to get connected straight into the uh, center pin of this bulkhead connector and the ground plane is going to be soldered onto here and uh, the hole that I've drilled through here is about uh, five millimeters in uh, diameter just uh, big enough so I can put the bulkhead connector through and not have any danger of actually shorting out that center pin to the side of the tin there that's going to be our uh, reflector and ground plane so I'm going to pre-tin these areas here it doesn't take a uh, great deal of heat to actually solder this in place you can do it uh, quite easily with a soldering iron so next I'm going to solder the bi-quad element onto the uh, SMA connector. Now I've cut this leg down to 15 millimeters because remember we want the uh, element to be uh, away from the uh, reflector by 15 millimeters. And I've also sharpened the end of that leg up as well just so I can fit it into the SMA connector there because this gauge wire is a little bit too thick to fit in there. So just sharpen it up a little bit and you should be able to solder it in there no problem. So now that I've got the bi quad soldered in place onto the SMA connector, I now need to solder a ground from uh, this side of the bi quad element down onto the reflector itself. So I've got this uh, length of wire here and I've uh, bent it at that right angle leg there at the bottom. I've already pre tinned the uh, bottom of the tin here and the uh, leg that I'm going to solder in place. So I'll solder that in place down onto the tin first. When that's soldered in place, I'll come in with a soldering iron and solder it directly to the element itself. And then of course, I'll just cut away any waste that there is left over. So I've got everything soldered in place now. I've got it uh, connected to that SMA connector and I've got a nice strong connection to the ground there, the actual reflector pie dish itself. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, add a little bit more strength to it. I'm gonna put some epoxy putty around here. You could probably use hot glue, something like that. Just something to actually protect those joints and uh, add a little bit of strength to the element as well. So here's the bi-quad with its uh, paint on there and I don't think it looks uh, too bad at all. You could probably put some kind of cover over here as well if you wanted to protect those elements. Some uh, kind of thin cork or thin plastic should work well. So I've got the uh, alpha card connected on the back there so let's plug it in and see how well it actually performs. So let's give it a quick scan then and see how well it actually performs. So I'm just holding it in the position out of the window in my lab here. Let's move it around slightly. And we've got quite a few access points coming up there so it works really, really well. We've got quite a few green ones as well that we could connect to if we wanted to. But uh, very impressive and very simple to build. So as you saw in that video then, uh, the performance of this is really, really impressive and that's why the uh, single bi-quad is one of my favourite directional antennas. It's so easy to build, even if your measurements are a little bit out, it still works well. And uh, you can just look around your house and see what you've got to actually make one of these. And uh, if you find something metal and you can fit a uh, single bi-quad element in it, you can actually use most things you know you don't have to use a pie dish like this i've even built them before using uh, those little sardine tin cans they work really well as well although you don't get as much performance as you would with this because the reflector in the little sardine can is a lot smaller but they uh, do have a much smaller footprint than this 
and with this build as well there's not a great deal of room there at the back to uh, tighten the uh, alpha card on and off but um, you know if you have a look on ebay you can pick one of these pigtails up for 99 pence plus uh, free shipping and you can use that in between there as well and yes you're going to get a little bit of loss using the pigtail between the antenna and the uh, wi-fi card but even so because it's such a strong performer you know it's still going to outperform most antennas that you can pick up off ebay anyway so i hope this video has cleared a few of the questions up that i've been getting on some of my older videos from my newer subscribers and the uh, method that i use to actually construct one of these is really really easy you can't really go wrong if you uh, follow the method that i use to make this single element bi quad and to be perfectly honest with you this antenna will outperform the majority of antennas that you can get off ebay the cheap ones from china anyway it really is a uh, strong performing antenna and it's simple to build no specialist equipment and uh, you know even if you've never built one of these before you could build it in under a couple of hours easily so i hope you enjoyed this uh, video and uh, if you did please give it a thumbs up any questions or comments drop them below and hopefully you'll join me on the next one